Hello everybody, my name is Splattercat and welcome to this, the next episode of our Don't Starve LP. It's been a couple in-game days since our last episode and so I wanted to kind of recap what our plans are. If you take a look at our winterometer or our winterometer or whatever you want to call it, whatever enunciation you choose to assign to this particular super cool scientific object of measurement, we need to get ready for winter because during the day it's not getting quite as warm as it was before and you know winter's coming guys we got to get ready for it so we do have a decent food supply at the moment not amazing i'm hoping that the berry bushes will choose to blossom one more time before we get torn up by the horrible ravages of winter but if we don't you know we'll roll with the punches but for now we need to get some clothing because we're not going to be able to get anything done during the course of oh my god we almost got struck by lightning there that was pretty close so let's get ourselves a razor here oh never mind you don't equip a razor anymore i keep telling myself that I don't need to equip that. We're still going insane. We're still losing our minds. We're still not doing so well. As you can see, all of our bunnies have turned into, I guess, beardlings or what those are called. I've gathered a number of rabbits, and one thing that I've actually noticed is that the rabbits become beardlings in your inventory, which is all kinds of weird. And what is a gobbler doing way the hell down here now? Let me be a little careful because I am going to shave some beefaloes. I've heard it's safest to do it during nightfall, so maybe we should actually come back and do this later, but I am going to grab some manure so that we can fertilize crops over the course of winter. Now, I don't think they grow, but I'm pretty sure they advance a stage every time you give them manure, so that may help us out. They aren't in heat right now, so we're not being attacked. They're all done with their rut, which is fantastic for us. That's actually a really good thing for us. Let's go place rabbit traps, actually. All of the rabbit traps that we had placed previously have now expired. They've all broken. They've all been annihilated by the savage ravages of bunnies. And since we can catch beardlings to get nightmare fuel, instead of having to go just ridiculously crazy to get it, it's a little bit safer to get it from these bunnies. So let's set a few more traps. We'll see if we can get some more meat out of them. I may recover my sanity before winter shows up so that we don't end up dealing with tons of extra handicaps. So we don't end up with ourselves feeling a little bit special. But until that point, let's throw that on, and let's actually go look around for bits of the Maxwell portal. I feel like we haven't done a lot of exploration or a lot of general fun time in this LP, and I'd really like to get out there and take a look around the map. So as I recall, we had a swamp down here. Our health is almost partially restored. Let me get our hunger taken care of. There we are. Well, it's not completely taken care of. And there we are. Now we're nice and good to go. Actually, I see seeds behind that tree. So bestow upon me your seeds, noble tree. I don't know if that tree's noble. He could be a total knave. You never know. I used to have problems. I took a, I took a course one time called Number Theory. And while I'm thinking about it, nobles and knaves... Actually, it was called Knights and Knaves. And it was on, like, Smolyan's Island or something. That's what it was called. And they were word problems where you had to figure out... Basically, like, knights always tell the truth and knaves always tell lies. And so it was kind of a binary. It taught you to use binary switch logic and things like that. But anyways, it sounds boring. But you'd always have, like, four dudes in the question that would show up and be like... This man is a knight. This man is a knave. And you had to use their testimony logically to figure out who was telling the truth. It was awful. But anyways, I, I don't know why talking about roguish trees brought me to... What in the hell? Oh, dear God. What is... Hey. Hey, you. That wasn't cool. That wasn't cool. You can't attack me. Oh, they got moves. They got mad jukes. That's unfortunate. Let's see if I can fight him. Oh, he jukes me. <laughs> in Soviet swamp. Swamp monster juke you. And come on, hit me, punk. Come on, what are you going to do? Oh, you can't do nothing. What are you going to do, frogman? I don't know if it was wise to attack him like that. That was probably not in my best interest. But now they're fighting with a frog, so I've got a distraction. It looks like you've got to time that a little better. And you can also... Oh, we got a fish and some frog legs. All right. And look... Ooh, free tentacle spike. Looks like we've got a little war zone going on down here. The fish stack, and so do the frog legs. So this is an excellent opportunity for us to stock up for the future. So we're just going to watch the combat unfold over here, and we're going to hope that it turns out for the best, or at least in our favor slightly. I don't know how friendly these are. They don't appear to be that friendly. They keep trying to punch me. And while sometimes friends will punch one another, just to kind of, you know, just to flex that superiority, I don't feel like they're punching me in a friendly manner. And as soon as we get all this out of the way... We've got a small amount of time before the rest of the evening unfolds, so let's get out of this guy's way. We'll pick up the rest of these goodies here. And what we were concerned about was going back and getting fur from the beefaloes. I do really, really like the fact that we just wrangled some frog legs, though. That's amazing. That actually... Oh, there's even more over here. 
Are they getting more aggressive as nightfall's coming in? I can't really tell, but there's stale frog legs and fish everywhere. And since winter is a coming, it almost seems like this would be the best possible plan. It's just to come down here and watch the fishmen get annihilated. I don't even know what those things are called. They're called merms or something like that. Anyways, that's the first time I've ever seen them. They are, they are kind of special. So <laughs> we've got a new contender here in this wondrous new world. Why is there a hound's tooth sitting around over here? I'm not going to ask too many questions. I'm just going to take it. But let's go find our beefalo friends. And as before, we're going to go on a sneak attack. We're going to get a little nostalgic here. And speaking of nostalgia, I was driving down the road, like, this was just a few hours ago, actually. And I didn't know that these people existed anymore. I didn't know that this actually happened in the modern era, but I heard a familiar tune that I hadn't heard in quite some time. And I was like, that can't be the song that I thought it was. It was somebody listening to Break Stuff by Limp Biscuit. I was instantly transported back to, like, seventh grade when that song first came out. And I was like, oh my god, somebody is actually listening to Break Stuff by Limp Biscuit. Like, really? Like, it's been a while. I haven't heard that track in a long, long time. And lo and behold, I opened the window and looked over, and I guess there are Limp Biscuit fans left. I always figured that Limp Biscuit kind of went the way of the buffalo, but after I got home, I googled it, and I guess Fred Durst is still just riding that pony to death. I have no clue. But let's make a fire here, God, before I get dragged out just talking about Limp Biscuit, which is a subject I don't want to talk about at all. And I try to only talk about the subjects that I like when I'm in my own LPs. That seems to, you know, you don't want to talk about things you don't care about. Well, unless it's in kind of a, kind of a snarky manner. And they look chafed now. I don't think that I'm very good at shaving beefaloes because they look decidedly chafed down here. Or maybe that's just leftovers from the mating season. Maybe they are still just ridiculously chafed from the mating season. I'm going to try and push this one out of the way. I know I can rotate the camera, but I still don't feel like I can see the things that I want. And hey, you shadow man, go away. Now, I know that some of the shadows are going to attempt to put out our fire. I don't know if our sanity is completely low enough yet to have to worry about that, but let's get on with our mission of shaving them, making them into sling blade buffaloes so that they can eat their french fried potatoes. And then, let's see, where did my razor go? There it is. So we'll razor a few more of these guys as gently as possible. We don't want to make their chafing worse. And we don't want them to end up with athlete's fur or anything of that nature. We want to be kind to our beef buddies. And it looks like I'm going to have to make another fire just so I can see over here. I could bring a torch, I know. So before somebody says, you could... Oh, Christ. Okay, I messed up, I messed up. Beefalo? Beefalo? Oh, no. Eh. No, 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 no. Beefaloes. Beefaloes. Be kind. I didn't mean to. It was an accident. I speared you on accident. Has that ever worked as an excuse after you stabbed somebody? <laughs> it was an accident. I didn't mean to stab you with this long, pointy object. It was complete and total accident. Oh, God. All right. Run for it. We need to shake some beefaloes. You know, you guys should really let it go. It was an accident. <laughs> I'm fearful for my life right now. This is not going to turn out well for me. I can tell already. Oh, my God. Beefaloes, go away. Beefaloes, why? You guys really, water off a duck's back, beefaloes. Water off a duck's back. I feel like you could appreciate that phrase, and I don't like the way that you're holding a grudge here. Beefaloes are like, we don't hold grudges. We cradle them. We cradle them, and we stroke them lovingly. And their headbugs actually do hurt a lot. If you look at my log suit, it took a huge chunk of damage from that. And they look so sad after you shave them. That's always kind of the whole, that's why he's so angry. I bet that's why he's chasing me so much. It's because I just ruined his chances with the beefa ladies. The beefa babes. Now he'll never get picked for beefa prom. And I've already used that joke. I know. I know, guys. I know. I'm a simple man, and I didn't have time to write new material. And so now I just slog on saying the, old th the same old things I used to. I guess I'll drag them down into the swamp. Maybe they'll fight the merms or something. I don't know. We gotta do something here, though. These beefaloes are gonna waste an entire day's worth of... Okay, so there's a tentacle up there. Let's see if we can get them tentacled. Yes. Tentacled? No. Damn it, beefaloes. Damn it. Please get tentacled. Oh my god, I don't know what we're gonna do here. Maybe they'll fight with the merms. I don't have any clue. Merms? Fight these beefaloes for me. Somebody fight these beefaloes for me. Dear God. The aggro range on these things is just absurd. It's actually starting to become an irritation. I think I can probably kill this one, though. There we go. Fight the tentacle, beefalo. 
I don't have time for your shenanigans. I don't have time for your broom wielding. And actually, God, there are a lot of tentacles down here too. But this does leave me with a pristine opportunity to grab some fish and to grab some more froggy. Oh God, okay, maybe not. Maybe not such a pristine opportunity. I am not doing so well right now. The world of Don't Starve is just being hazardous to my health, but I will take these enormous meats. Let's see here, do I have any room for them? Oh God, that thing just bit me. Okay, so I guess the shadows are real now. And so I'm gonna go back and try and grab these meats because I'm always grabbing meat. That's that's why I'm popular at parties. <laughs> we'll head back over to the beefalo fields, grab the rest of that beefalo fur, and we will prepare before this day ends. Good God, we are just... We're not in good shape, my friends. We are not in good shape. We are in less than satisfactory shape. I should probably cook up these fish, too. I don't even know where I placed... My, it's got to be over here somewhere. Are they going to aggro me again? Or are you guys going to be good? Are you guys going to be sociable? Or are you guys going to get angry at me for stabbing you? Because I really feel like that was a bit of an overreaction. It was one stab. You are quite large creatures. I feel like you could afford one stab without getting too spiteful. Beefaloes don't really listen to lectures, though. They aren't much for the advice taking. Now, our sanity is pretty tore up. But the point of letting the sanity drop was just to get enough of the... These little guys, the beardlings, so that we can get some beard hair, so we can get some other things wrangled. Now, let's see if we can make ourselves some super awesome jerky. There is rot over here, which I am going to collect for myself. I'm going to keep an eye over here, because if a gobbler shows up, that's also going to be a little bit less than satisfactory. That will be a situation that will make me very, very sad. And so, let's cook up. We'll dry one of those, or we're going to try to dry all of them. We're going to do our best to dry every single one of them. We'll throw the the dookies in there and so oh we do get okay good I had heard that you get nightmare fuel from killing these so a really efficient way to get things done is just to get a ton of bunnies in your inventory and then just start killing them back and forth like dozens of them but it doesn't appear to work that well so let's cook up some fish here because I don't think the fish is gonna hold very long that's one of the downsides to fishy type foods I don't think they hold very well sands refrigeration and we'll get ourselves fed up to the best most satisfactory levels and I don't know if I have enough fur so we may be, we may maybe 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 go back down for another sneak attack mission see if we can get a few more bits of fur we need winter clothing and a winter hat at bare minimum would be very nice so that we can keep our chili ears warm and I'm actually gonna harvest all these bushes out right oh don't harvest that one never mind and so we do have a gobbler. I'm going to keep an eye on him, though. We've got a little bit of time left in the day. I'm extremely wary to walk away from my own bushes. Because we don't want to waste berries. I mean, it's gobblers are a substantial problem to my farming establishment. And I would prefer that they would just piss off, but they don't seem to be getting the memo. I left them a note. I've tried discussing it with my congressman. Yeah, and you know, you know how that goes over. Speaking of congressmen, speaking of congressmen, another diatribe, another, another, you know, another set of, not ideas, I guess, but another thing that I heard. So I heard that in Washington, D.C., here in the States, that there's like a barbershop that all the politicians go to, and the barbershop uses like a strange technique. It burns the hair off of your head. And I was like, why would they want to go and get hair burned off of their head? It must smell awful. It must just be just terrible. But then thinking about it, I was like, well, they're politicians. I'm sure that the smell of burning hair and just fire reminds them of home. So that's probably why they all tend to gather there. But I guess it's a sign of status among those politicians. Like if you go and get your hair cut there or you get your hair burned off there. Anyways, let's head back down to the beefaloes. I'm going to get a torch ready just in case this backfires on me because you never know. You never, never, never know. And I don't have space in my inventory for the beardlings right now, so I guess we'll take our chances. I'll run back down here, and this is our second night, so I owe you guys a question. I know the last few times I haven't done a question of the day. Today's question of the day, the vegetable you hate the most. I feel like my whole life has been spent, well, at least part of my childhood was spent always eating vegetables that I didn't want. I didn't, like, want anything to do with. I hated them. And the number one thing that I despise, like, of all time is lima beans like I don't know what inspired the first person to eat lima beans but god those things are awful those things are just 
they, they're basically like little sandbags, little green sandbags that you put in your mouth and eat. That's the only way I know how to describe them to people that have never had them. They're just multiple shades of terrible. And where did my razor go? Now that I'm thinking about it, did I put it back in a chest somewhere? Or did I drop it in a panic after I stabbed that beefalo? Oh, well. So we've got ourselves... Oh, God. Hey, 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 hey. None of that, buddy. Oh. All right. So I figured that would make him go away because he's made of shadow. So you think a light-emitting object, a attack from a light-emitting object to his face would make him just back off. But now, is this the same monster? Does he teleport every time that I hit him? Or is this, like, a different one? Like, is he going to die at any moment? Because if this is a feudal combat, which is similar to Mortal Kombat, but kind of the opposite, feudal combat! That also sounds like something that they might have done in medieval times. <laughs> but I mean futile. Oh, damn it. No, 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 no. Back off, back off, back off. Oh, no! All right, so we got ourselves killed. Insanity is kind of a bitch. Well, that's probably going <laughs> to... Oh, I'm so embarrassed. Who is this right here? What is this new feature that I'm seeing? Well, that was definitely out of the plan. Uh, I don't know what to say, guys. I guess I, I slipped off my A-game there. I wasn't ready for insanity, I guess. And so I see kind of what people are complaining about. Insanity seems to be pretty tough. This may be the shortest iteration of the series I've ever done, which is kind of embarrassing considering I have like over 60, 70 episodes of this made now. I'm definitely red in the face right now from embarrassment. But anyways, that was the final episode of, I guess, what we'll call Season 3 of the Don't Starve LP. I'll probably fire up another one in the next couple days or so. Yeah, I'll probably start, like, a Season 4, another survival season. But this works in our favor because in the last patch, I guess they added, like, marble and a bunch of other things that we weren't going to be able to see anyways. I don't think I took that last shot, by the way. I feel a little cheated right now. I feel like that wasn't quite right. So if I learned one thing from this, it's don't run upwards when you're trying to get away from monsters. They seem to land hits that they shouldn't if you're running that way. But anyways, I uh, this is kind of an embarrassment, but... The new map that we generate will have all the current features, so hopefully it'll turn out okay. I'm actually considering doing adventure mode finally, so I may consider that as well. My name is Splattercat, and embarrassment aside, I'm glad you decided to join me here today, and I will see you guys next time. Take care out there, everybody.